Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning how to find the centroid of a planar surface by integration. And we will end this video by working through an example problem, testing our understanding of the theory. Firstly, we must assign a coordinate system. We will consider a planar surface, S, with a surface area, denoted A, which will lie on the plane of coordinate directions, X and Y. And the centroid of S, which is the geometric center of S that we are trying to find the position for, is denoted xc, yc. The position of the geometric centre of the surface is defined as xc equals a to the power of minus 1 times by the surface integral of x with respect to a, which is just the area. Or in other words, the surface integral of x with respect to a divided by the area. And then yc is equal to a to the power of minus 1 times by the surface integral of y with respect to a. To demonstrate how xc, yc is found using these equations, we will consider the simple case where S is a plane rectangular surface with an area of A is equal to Lw, as we can see here in the diagram. Here, xy denotes the coordinate directions in the plane of S, with the origin located at the bottom left-hand corner of S. Therefore, the surface S consists of the points x is equal to or between 0 and w, and y is equal to or between 0 and L. For this very simple case, we can work out just by looking that xc is equal to half w and yc is equal to half L. In the equations, dA is a small element of area on the surface S, and in this case we can define dA as equal to dx times dy, where dx and dy denote small changes in x and y and the surface integrals in the equations correspond to positioning dA at all points x, y on the surface. Using the equations then, we have xc equals a to the power of minus 1 times the surface integral of x with respect to a, which can be expressed as a to the power of minus 1 times the integral of x with respect to x from 0 to w, and then with respect to y from 0 to l. In terms of the dimensions we have for our rectangle, this can be expressed as a to the power of minus 1 times by the integral of x with respect to x from 0 to w times by the integral of 1 with respect to y from 0 to l. Because the rectangular surface has a simple geometry, with the perimeter edges parallel to either the x-axis or the y-axis, the integral limits are not functions of x or y, but are constants, and, as a result, the x-integration can be done independently of the y-integration and vice versa. Hence, the integrals are separable, as we have just seen. Carrying out this calculation gives 1 divided by a times by w squared times l divided by 2, which simplifies to half w. Then, carrying out the same process for yc, this time integrating y with respect to y and then with respect to x, we get yc is equal to 1 over a times by w l squared divided by 2, which just simplifies to half l. Hence, x c y c is equal to half w half l, which confirms our thoughts from before. It is not common for a situation to have constant integral limits. To see how to calculate the position of the centroid for a scenario where the integral is not separable, we will look at the example of a symmetric triangle. Considering the triangle shown here, relative to the coordinate directions x, y, find the centroid x, c, y, c. For this example, as previously used, we will use the equations x, c equals a to the power of minus 1 times by the surface integral of x with respect to a, and y, c equals a to the power of minus 1 times by the surface integral of y with respect to a, where the area of the triangle a is equal to a, b. We will start by finding xc, and by intuition we know that xc is equal to 0. However, let's still work it out manually for practice. Firstly, we will let dA equal dx dy, and think of dA as being positioned at some point on the surface as shown in the diagram. We then fix either x or y and integrate over the other variable. So, say we fix y and integrate over x. This corresponds to integrating with respect to x with y fixed over a strip of area between the ranges x equals minus a 
times by 1 minus y over b and x equals a times 1 minus y over b, which is illustrated as the region between the dotted lines shown in the diagram. The result will be an expression in y which we can then integrate with respect to y over the range of y equals 0 and y equals b. Therefore, rewriting the equation above, we have a times xc is equal to the integral of x with respect to x from x equals minus a times by 1 minus y over b to x equals a times by 1 minus y over b, which is then integrated with respect to y from y equals 0 to y equals b. Integrating x with respect to x gives us 1 half x squared, with limits of x equals minus a times 1 minus y over b, and x equals a times 1 minus y over b, which is then integrated with respect to y from y equals 0 to y equals b. Substituting in our limits results in 1 half a squared times by 1 minus y over b squared minus 1 minus y over b squared which is to be integrated with respect to y from y equals 0 to y equals b. And as we can see, this minus itself is equal to 0, so we are left with the integral of 0 with respect to y, which is just equal to 0. Therefore, a times xc is equal to 0, and as expected, xc is equal to 0. Or in other words, the centroid must lie along the vertical y-axis. Now, we will find yc, by applying the same principle we have just used. Again, we will initially keep y fixed and integrate with respect to x first. Rewriting the equation for yc above, we have a times yc is equal to y multiplied the integral of 1 with respect to x from x equals minus a times by 1 minus y over b to x equals a times 1 minus y over b, which is then integrated with respect to y from y equals 0 to y equals b. Integrating 1 with respect to x results with x, and then substituting in our boundary conditions, we get ayc is equal to the integral of y times a times 1 minus y over b plus 1 minus y over b with respect to y. And this can be simplified to 2a times by the integral of y times by 1 minus y over b with respect to y from y equals 0 to y equals b. And then carrying out this integration, we have 2a times by 1 half y squared minus 1 over 3b times by y cubed, with boundary conditions of 0 and b. And then substituting in these boundary conditions gives ayc is equal to 1 third times by ab squared. With a being equal to ab, we get yc is equal to 1 third times by ab squared divided by ab, which is just 1 third times b. Therefore, we can conclude by saying the position of the centroid of the above triangle, xc, yc, is equal to 0, 1 third b. So that then is how we can use integration to find the centroid of a planar surface. Although this method may not have been necessary for everything we have just worked through, the method will come in handy later on when we work through more complicated problems where we have to find the point of action of a pressure on a surface. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.